I'll start uh, by um, obviously sending our thoughts and prayers uh, to DeMar Hamlin, his family, um, the entire Buffalo Bills organization, uh, Cincinnati Bengals, um, the entire NFL community, all the players uh, that go out there and um, play the game that we love every week. Um, obviously, Monday night was a scary uh, situation, and, um, you know, I think there's, a, there's, you know, a lot of um, feeling and sentiment you can tell in our building and I'm sure around the league. Um, uh, just concerned for, um, you know, his, his well-being and as it should be. And so um, I thought that Sean and Zach did a great job, um, you know, of, of handling the situation as, um, you know, obviously as well as they could the other night. And, um, you know, we'll continue to be thinking about them and hoping for uh, good news, obviously, as we, as we go through the week. So, um, you know, so it's a, it's, a, it's a difficult situation. I think the players, we did a good job this morning. Our doctor, Dr. Singh, uh, educated them a little bit on, um, you know, what we know about that scenario, um, just so they have peace of mind about, you know, what actually occurred as best we know it. Um, and all of our support staff and uh, coaching staff, everybody uh, that the players would need uh, are here today. We'll be here all week in case they need anything else. But uh, uh, again, our thoughts and prayers are with uh, DeMar and his family and, and the entire Bills organization. <clears throat> Josh, if somebody you have a son playing football, did what happened kind of hit you on another level as a, just a parent? Yeah, uh, I talked with my wife about it uh, yesterday. Um, you know, I mean, it's we know this is a game that is, um, you know, it's a physical game. Um, I don't like to use the word violent. Uh, that's, you know, uh, obviously we're not trying to do that. Um, but, you know, we know that there are injuries. My son's had a handful of them, you know, broken bones, those kind of things. But I think this, you know, it just makes you uh, pause and, you know, kind of step back a little bit and, <clears throat> you know, think about, think about it. Um, there's no question about it, you know, and, um, I think the educational piece from the doctors um, that talked to us today, um, I think that was helpful, you know, just in terms of understanding um, what happened and the, the likelihood of it occurring in any, in any capacity, car accident, uh, you know, football game, Little League baseball, whatever. Um, just having an understanding of what it is and what happened uh, I think was helpful to everybody. But uh, it definitely does, uh, you know, when you – when you're a parent, uh, obviously, um, you know, there's risk involved. <clears throat> now, sometimes people get emotional when they talk about, or there's emotions that are involved, you know, when you're trying to make the sport safer. Um, and there's that fine line between the physicality and the and safety issue. And sometimes people do, you know, uh, complain about it, let's just say. But when something like that happens, is it kind of reaffirm that there's good reasons why some of these rules are being put in place? Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, the most important thing for us is that we – all can have a productive life, um, you know, during and after football. Um, and I think that uh, any anybody that wants to argue the other point, uh, I think, is missing the point. Um, you know, player safety uh, and health um, is obviously paramount. Um, and if you know, and it should be. I mean, that's what we all want to be able to do is try to live some kind of a successful life for as long as we can live it. Um, and so. Um, anything they can do to make it safer, um, whether it's the things on the helmets and training camp or all the stuff we've gone through, the pat, you know, any of those things that help, um, you know, uh, we should be for, you know, because there's nothing more important than the health of the, of the guys playing the game we love. Coach, uh, you know, you and Devontae were two notable people that donated to a, a Hamlet's toy drive despite the tragedy, well, not tragedy, but just the terrible situation how heartwarming is it that so many people can come together for the greater good like this yeah I mean it's 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 uh, it's not shocking to me because there's so many good people in our league and in, and in our world and I know we hear a lot about the negative stuff but um, this is a, a good example of everybody just pitching in to do the right thing and um, for a great cause and for a great guy you know and um, I think that just tells you that there's a bigger there's a bigger picture here, um, and I think 
you know, a lot of the, a lot of the people that you saw donate, you know, um, you know, they're doing it for the right, re right reasons. <clears throat> How difficult is it to get, ask the guys to get back to a, a work week when there's so much uncertainty and nobody really knows what's going on with them? Yeah, I, I mean, I think the the thing we just talked about this morning is is that, um, you know, we, we, we did talk about all this, you know, and I think that's a good thing. And if we need to talk about it more, we will. Um, and any resource that they need available to them um, is going to be made available. Um, I think that um, we'll do the we'll do the best thing we can in terms of blessing them with our effort and uh, attention to detail, so that we can. Um, you know, do the right things and be, you know, as competitive and as ready to go on Saturday as we can. Um, uh, certainly, you know, if, if anything else is needed in the next three or four days here, then that'll trump that. But, um, <clears throat> you know, each, each person handles it differently, Q, you know, so I'm not going to tell them how to deal with it, you know, in terms of their feelings or the way they go about it. Um, just try to do the, the right thing by the players and help them as much as we can to get ready. Um, you know, to play our final game. Gosh, uh, when you and Dave took over, um, you talked a lot about how this year a lot of it's going to be about evaluation and getting to know uh, the lay of the land here and the Raiders, the team itself. Uh, you're closing in on 12 months, uh, I think January 30th, somewhere around there. But how invaluable has this been as you look back um, to, to kind of get it to a point now where you do have a good handle of, of, of this situation, this team? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, every day, I'm, I've learned something every day, and I'm sure Dave could say the same thing. I think our teams probably, you know, the sentiment would be the same. Um, you know, you learn about the people, most importantly. Um, you know, strengths and weaknesses, areas we can improve, um, things I could do better, things Dave could do better, things our organization could do, you know, differently to try to make us, um, you know, as, as productive as we can be on a daily basis. Um, I think that if you if you take that approach, you know, and you use it, you use the information properly, and you're not, you know, uh, too proud to acknowledge where you need to improve. Um, I think that's the whole key here as we head into the off season. Once you know, once the game is over, you know, and um, our focus now is going to be on trying to do everything we can to win Saturday, um, and then once that's done, we'll have a chance to really take a deep breath and go back through everything and. Um, we know a lot more about everything now, you know, than we did obviously when we first got here. And um, so hopefully that can t lend itself to making a bunch of good decisions and, and improving the team in every way that we can, um, you know, moving forward this off season. <clears throat> when you go back and you look at the tape from uh, that week five game, you, obviously you guys did a lot of good things and just came up a little short. Can you look back at that and kind of look optimistic at what's, you know, heading forward into this matchup? I think, um, you know, you, you, you obviously that, that it's a significant um, portion of the preparation um, because we actually have lined up against them before. Um, I do think that there's a lot of things that have changed uh, since then. Um, players, some things schematically, they've added some players to their roster. We've added some players to ours. Um, they've lost a few players. We've lost a few players. Um, you know, so I think there's definitely some challenges in terms of just getting to know the personnel that's out there now um, as opposed to what it was. Um, <clears throat> but I definitely think that anytime you have previous knowledge of an opponent um, and you've played against them, you know, especially for the players, you know, they're out there, they're standing there in front of the guy in front of them for 65 plays, you know, uh, three months ago. I mean, so they have some intimate knowledge of, of the way that they play and how they go about their business. So. Um, I think it's helpful. Um, it doesn't always, uh, it's not always a precursor of what's going to happen the next game, as we know. The second game of these um, division rivalries is always a little bit different, you know, because, you know, you, 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 you're going to change some things. There's no question about it. So, um, you know, our focus is going to be on trying to get to know the team they have now, the way they're playing now. There's some things that have changed, obviously, for that. And, um, you know, get ourselves ready to go. Hopefully, we, you look, the formula is not going to change. We're going to need to get off to a good start. I mean, when they get off to a good start and they play the game the way they want to they want to play it, um, it's difficult, um, you know, and, and obviously taking care of the football and not giving them extra opportunities uh, is a huge part of, 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 of attempting to beat them. So um, this is as good a team, you know, we talked about that last week. It's the same thing. I mean, there's two teams in a row. I'd say this is as good a, of a football team as we're going to play. Obviously, Andy's done it a – a long time, um, they're playing in his vision and the way they want him to play. They have a uh, a lot of really really good players. Uh, they're they're really well coached, and you got to do a lot of things right to beat them. So um, it'll be a big challenge.
How much of a concern is Jared's elbow, and I guess somewhat related to that? Is there a emergency plan behind behind Chase? Um, yeah, no, uh, I'm not overly concerned about it. Um, you know, he's, uh, you know, just, I think it's normal bumps and bruises. You know, you guys saw he took a few hits. So, I mean, I think, I think we should be okay there. Um, but, uh, he and Chase will, uh, you know, get ready to go just like they, they did last week. Is, is there an update on Josh Jacobs and, and what has he shown you this year that maybe you weren't aware about him? Yeah, I don't have any update physically on him. You know, I think we're going to have to see how this week goes, you know, um, you know, a few more days before the game. So we'll, we'll be smart with him, obviously. Um, and, you know, look, he's – I'm not sure how many more words I can find to describe what he's done. Um, tough, dependable, um, prepared really hard every week. Um, he's been durable, you know. He's had the ball more than any other player on our team, clearly. Um, you know, and, and he's – He's really done a great job of keeping himself, um, you know, healthy and available all season long, even though he's been banged up, you know, a number of different times. Um, unselfish, does what whatever he can to help the team win. So, um, you know, I've said it a number of times how, how I feel about him, and um, that hasn't changed. <clears throat> no, you've uh, kind of been asked about this in, in regards to Jacobs, and I won't play into your decision, but he has a chance to uh, win the rushing title. I, I know that's not your focus, but, um, you know, it, for, for the history of the NFL, a guy, you, you're going to see that for years to come. Would that be kind of a cool topper uh, to his season? Yeah, I think if, uh, you know, look, I think individual um, records and accolades and those kind of things, um, if they're done within the framework of the team trying to, uh, trying to win games and do the best we can. I think they're great, you know, for the for the guys that accomplish them and achieve them. I think the biggest part for, for us is obviously understanding that they never get done alone. Um, there's a lot of people that I've obviously factored into that, um, the success of any one individual. So um, I think it's actually a neat thing for the team, um, not just for one guy, because even though, you know, one player would get that recognition, um, I think that's really, you know, the recognition belongs to a lot of people that have done some things to help him uh, achieve that. So um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, some good players obviously chasing him. You know, we know that. And, um, you know, and, and again, we'll see how his health goes the next few days. You're talking about uh, individual accolades and done within the team team frame. Can you just talk about Devontae Adams breaking the, the franchise record for yards in his first season here and the work that you've seen him put in to accomplish that with his team? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it doesn't surprise me. Um, you know, it's an incredible achievement. Uh, obviously, you know, we know whose record he broke. And, um, you know, I mean, he, he hasn't missed the practice. I mean, like literally like, you know, or, or, or very, very few reps the entire year, you know. And so to put in that kind of work and that kind of effort and that kind of uh, dedication to his craft when he's already achieved whatever he's achieved prior to being here, um, I think that just speaks to how uh, incredible this, the person is. Um, and he's been that way every day um, that we've been with him. So, um, you know, doesn't surprise me. Um, you know, was ready today, ready to go in the walkthrough. And, like, he's, you know, he's into it. Um, he wants to do things the right way every time he walks in the building. So um, it's a great representative, a great example to the young players uh, that are trying to figure it out. Like, this is, if you want to emulate somebody, he would be a, a really good one to, to follow. <clears throat> you guys all set? Thank you. Good to go. Thank you. Yep, thank you.